This is Zach. He has 200 hours in Tarkov and is joining a tournament in three days. This dude is crazy. That was the first thing I thought when he sent me this $2 donation live on my stream. Hey, thanks for the two, $2, man. I appreciate it. How, oh, how, oh, man. Invited to Invictus. And my immediate answer was, I, I will say there's a lot more qualified gamers out there. I mean, the way I play, I'll be honest, the way I play is not very competitive. Like, I don't know if my playstyle would fit a competitive playstyle. I'm a competitive format. Um, the way I play, I play in like a very... Uh, I, I treat this game like a survival game, so I play slow. Zach mentioned how many other Tarkov veterans turned down his offer. And after I heard this, I was willing to do it as long as he knew my background as a Tarkov player. He did mention he's seen a couple of my YouTube videos and he's convinced I have what it takes to help him. And that was all I needed to hear. So I agreed to be his coach, free of charge, as long as he's okay with me turning this into a YouTube video. We planned a coaching session live on stream the next day and I asked him to put together clips of himself in PvP. And immediately he uploaded a YouTube video of a compilation of PvP fights we can go over. I basically have less than 72 hours to get to know this guy, learn how he plays Tarkov, and see how we can take advantage of his strengths and correct what we can before the tournament. It's a lot to do, but this is something I've never come across before. But I'm ready for it. So this is Zach, guys. Um, so you have, have how many hours of Tarkov again? Uh, here, I can stream for you. Under 200? Uh, I thought you were 200 plus. You're actually under 200. The first thing I wanted to know was his background on FPS games. This could be a good indicator of how I can work with him. I'm going to look like a mega degenerate here. Counter-Strike, 2,000 hours. How much again in Apex? It's like 600 on Steam. I think I have another like four or 500 on got just about a thousand ish uh overwatch i've probably got over a thousand i think overwatch is the game i got the highest rank in I see. so i got to high masters what would you say dps is your main fps game outside of tarkov csgo to be honest CSGO. I, lo I love it just from that alone i could easily tie this info with the gameplay we're about to see and understand how he likes to approach pvp in tarkov and when we went over his compilation of pvp fights i was completely surprised with what i saw you could see the lack of some basic tarkov knowledge and mechanics because of having played only 200 hours but his mechanical skills and basic fps game sense was great there are only a few things i need to address and call me crazy but i felt like he had a good chance in this tournament the only tournament rules you'll really need to know are it's solos only in public servers every raid with the survive status is three points and you get various points for kills as seen here you're only allowed to run labs customs or reserve to get these points and each player is given a tournament account that's already level 42 with starting stuff the tournament runs for three hours and the top 25 out of 50 players will qualify to the next round zach and i both agreed that our goal is to at least qualify qualify to the next round, so we'll need to get him to 25th place. After reviewing his PvP fights, these were some things I wanted to correct. First thing I noticed, when he panics, he tends to freeze in place. So instead of sitting around in a time of panic, I'd rather have him do a big reposition to reset a fight and re-engage at a better position, or just completely disengage for survival. Okay, so when you got so you got shot here, you, you took cover here, fair. At this moment, I would probably try to flank even further but i know the idea that you don't want to just keep running because you might get tracked someone just might just be tracking you and hitting you but i was worried as well here that if you pop your head here he's probably just like whoever was sniping you is still watching that angle i was i was expecting a one tap here as you popped up but it seems like looks like he's fighting ai actually what i would have done here is like a super reposition so something i always say um in like my videos and like in pvp in general is trying to reset a fight because the problem with this is he knows where you are. He has a very good idea of where you are. You haven't seen this guy at all yet. If you're going to try to scope him in, you have no idea where he is. So there's no sense of pre-aiming where he is. There's no sense of crosshair placement. You're kind of just searching all over, looking for his pixels. If, if you try to counter snipe him, which is kind of what happened here. So I would have just kept committing here and then run like keep running past the railroad and just like do a big, re big reposition, super reset the fight. So reset the fight in a way that uh he won't know where you are and you can kind of reposition yourself in a better position because right now he's kind of just tracking you as you try to counter snipe him you have no idea where to place your crosshair right like where are you pre-aiming you're gonna do a scan really quick and then by the time you see him he's already shooting you there you go second thing i wanted him to respect ai when fighting them and treat them like players I felt like he was rushing a lot when fighting scavs and he needed to slow it down a bit and take advantage of cover and timing. Third, I wanted Zach to use right hand peeks more if given the opportunity. So 
to be fair that was kind of 50 50 you did have the first shot on him but we don't know what that looked like on his side of the screen with desync and, and stuff again he's, he's just settled down 20 20 hindsight but right hand peek try to get a right hand peek maybe maybe instead of peeking like that do a sprint to a right hand peek you'll see a lot of people okay. do this in my head if you sprint to this left cover and maybe try to get a right hand peek you, you have a better chance i don't think he'll get to kill you with his reaction time and what's also nice about sprinting to this side is you could either God, sprint to that it. side do a right hand peek or you can stick to the left hug the left wall get in this door and yeah. play around with it you know am i gonna peek here am i gonna peek here am i gonna peek here you know what i mean but looking back this to be fair this was also kind of a 50 50 fight i think either of you could have won this but uh you know just being 2020 hindsight what you could have done better i guess that's one thing and the last thing something i'm guilty of as well is getting rid of greedy repeaks that was such a good push Okay, so, um, dude, th this feel this feels like a clip from my own stream. <laughs> but, um, but, dude, you played it so perfect, but I feel this. Um, so this is something that hap happened to me recently. So when the dude's mag dumping, I tend to re-peek as well, same. This is something I've been working on recently is I peek, same, 50-50, no one really shot each other. He starts mag dumping. Instead of re-peaking, wait. Wait for him to yeah. either end his shots, maybe reload. It looks like he's just pre-firing until he gets out of the way. So just wait and then push once he's out of ammo or... Because the problem with this, when people are just like pre-firing, you know, we, we literally catch the bullet, right? Yeah, I think I say that at the end there, that I should have waited for him to dump his mag and then peek. You did everything there for... I peaked him while he was shooting. I should have waited for yeah, him to Yeah, perfect. Yeah, what, your per what your partner said. You played that perfect, dude. That was like Everybody right super now. clean, honestly. The day after, I caught Zach doing a practice stream for the tournament. I watched him for a couple of hours and already saw so many improvements. He finds a duo running along the garage wall and engages. I guess hurt. He tried to push and even focuses on right hand peaks. Then he realized he could do a big reposition and reset instead of pushing this. And reposition again. Just like what we talked about yesterday. Oh, they still think I'm back there. Need to regen. This was a big moment to see. He let go of a risky 1v2 and turned it into a solid free kill. There's less than 24 hours to the tournament and I'm already proud of the progress Zach's made. He's gonna kill it. I know it. Our agreed strategy for this tournament was to prioritize surviving. Only fight when we have to. As long as we don't fall into a losing streak and we get easy survives, I'm confident we can make it to top 25. I was allowed to be in Discord with him, but at the end of the day, I knew I wanted Zach to make decisions for himself for the most part. But I was there to guide him when he needed me. Zach spawned into his first raid and honestly, my heart was pumping. He seemed to be in the zone though. Movement looked great and awareness was on point. He was checking his angles like the CSGO gamer he is. Wherever you want to cut through, just play it slow. Play quiet. We heard player movement in the area and gunshots popping off. But Zach did great and stuck to the game plan. To only fight if it's an easy one. He weaved through the map and easily made it to extract without a scratch. Great start, a good warm-up win to get the tournament going. And also, if you hear birds in the background throughout this video, his mom has like an organization that like rescues birds, so they have a lot of birds at home. There's a scav in there or something. Nice. Half point right there. You're good. Keep going. Zach got a couple more good scav kills to add more points on the board. And at this point, I recommended for him to just make it to extract. But yeah, I did join a couple of tournaments back then, but uh Okay, so he can choose to fight this chat. If I were him, I'd again I'm I'm playing it safe in my head. I would just run to extract. Again, I don't want to backseat too much. You would hop it over this way? You could. The left, the left, you know that left wall you can hop over by power? Oh. This one, yep. But be careful though. Oh. Did I keep getting that audio glitch? But there might be someone near you, man. Careful. Yeah, yeah. Man. Careful. Awesome. 
kill. Reposition. Reposition. He repeaked the moment he heard the M4 stop just like how we reviewed it. It was perfectly played. This was a huge confidence boost for everyone, especially Zach, to get a PMC kill early with a win he fully deserved. But I don't want to celebrate it too much either. So I did my best to keep my cool to not overhype him so he could stay composed, grab the loot, the dog tag, and get out safe. And he did exactly that. Dude, amazing. What's your problem, man? Amazing. Well freaking played. All right. That's don't forget points. to get shots, man. Yep. We put this high tier kit in stash for later use and ran customs back. Just a few minutes after spawn, Zach finds a PMC hanging around ice cream. He held the angle hoping for a quick PMC kill but never got a clear shot on this guy. So he decided to disengage and move on with the raid. A great decision here to not get greedy. Zach went on to kill 4 scavs and survive the raid. A solid win here. Yeah, he's, do he's doing good chat. He's doing good. He went amazing man, I love it. In this next raid, we spawned over at the ZB11 side and started with 3 quick scav kills. Then Zach decided to do a big wraparound through customs extension and hug the wall towards boat extract. I reminded Zach not to rush, to walk it out through the bushes and trees, and prioritize surviving. Awesome kill, bro. Well played. Well played. Thank you. Again, take your time. You might have one more. You, you want to be careful. Loot if you can, but you don't have to loot. Yeah. The way he's playing, I think he's a solo, but you're never, you're never sure, right? For, yeah, right? he could also be sk sneaking up on someone, so there's a lot of variables. Just be careful. Careful as well of staying to the wall too much, because what you, how you kill that guy might happen to you. Yeah, no other cover, right? I love what Zach did here. Although he wasn't able to min-max his loot, he decided to just take what he can in the moment and just double back and do a big reposition instead of going along the same path in case there was more contact. This is something we emphasized when we were doing our coaching sessions, to reposition as much as possible when you're unsure about a situation. He played it safer and smarter, and I respect that. He continued along this path to get past dorms and made it to boat extract. Careful that fire. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I will play the screenshot, don't forget. Yep. I honestly love this. Zach's having fun, and I'm all for it. At this point, a little over an hour has elapsed in this tournament, so we have under two hours to go to get more points. I haven't checked the leaderboard yet because we're on a good roll, and I don't want Zach or myself to lose composure. As long as we keep the steady pace, I feel like we have a good shot at 25th place. We begin the next raid with a spawn by Old Gas. Zach decides to clear the area of scavs for some quick half points. I think there's a scav inside. I hate peeking them here, though. You can push it. Go Got a shotgun. Just I just go like this. Yep, yep. White, white peek it. Confidence. There you go. Easy. At this point, with those four scav kills, Zach's got a guaranteed two whole points. And if he gets an easy extract, that's a five-point raid. Not a bad quick raid if he does survive. All right, I think from this point on, do a quick extract. Unless you find a PMC. Good raid so far. There's a fair amount of kills. I can swear I heard something. Yeah, you probably did. There probably was something 100%. Probably was something 100%. Oh, fuck. I'm in that situation again. So, the question... Wait, wait, wait. Did he shoot at you, though? Yes. That tracer went okay. right in front of my face. Okay, okay. Gotcha. My bad. I didn't see it. Okay. All you, baby. You can do this. Remember the, the tips from last time. Easy. Okay. Better to be a moving target than a stationary target anyway, right? Keep going, keep going. That's sniper scab. That's sniper scab. You're good. Well played, brother. He got the <laughs> Easy, easy. He can't aim. You're good. He can't aim. He can't aim. He can't aim. Prone, prone. Prone. Well played. You're behind cover. He can't shoot you from there. Main kill, propital, whatever you gotta do. Make a more. Make another run for it. Don't even bother fighting this guy. Stay to survive. It's My legs good. blacked out. I can't move, right? No, you, you have a proppy. Proppy is painkiller. Proppy is painkiller. I can run? Okay. <coughs> yeah, you can run with the proppy. Oh, uh, Run it, run it. Perfect. All played. All played. You're good, dude. He's still there. He's still up there trying to snipe. You're, you're golden. Just leave golden. Cut left. 
keep that zigging zagging going, man. Oh. It's all good. It's all good. It was a good effort, and this is only Zach's first death of the tournament. This specific moment sparked a debate from one of my viewers in my live stream who said it was a bad move on my part to urge him to keep moving. He said I should have kept him tucked in this little corner to do a full heal and then make a run for it. That my urge to keep Zach moving was what killed him. And I did answer him saying the priority was to keep moving. There were several things I was worried about. Number one, this sniper might have a teammate chasing Zach down on ground, or also the risk of getting grenaded in that corner. And if Zach did some Somehow survive those snipes in this little alleyway, we could have made it for a quick survive to RUAF Extract. At the end of the day though, this was a 2020 hindsight debate and it could have gone either way. What's awesome though was how well Zach took the loss. He shrugged it off and immediately wanted to get back in, but this time he wanted something different. I'm thinking I change it up now. Ooh, reserve time? Yep, I'm gonna change it up. I'd love this attitude. Instead of sulking over that loss, he felt the need to get back up, but change things up. My gut though was worried for this move to reserve. Customs has been working great, and as much as I wanted to recommend him to stay in customs, I wanted Zach to make his own decisions and do what feels right for him. So I trusted him, I let him be, and I was there if he needed me. We're also still holding off on checking the leaderboard, especially after a loss like that. I don't want to add any more pressure to get the ball rolling again. What'd you feel? What made you want to? What made you want to switch to reserve? I don't know. I just feel like it's a good change of pace after running customs back to back to back like that. Yeah. I also think there's more potential for points here if I can get down there, kill raiders, and get the fuck out. The only thing with the other guy is what we talked about a lot is like getting trapped down there, right? So yeah, just, just be wary of that. But you'll be fine. Maybe free PvP can stack. kill us. As Zach mentioned, the plan is to make it to the underground area and farm raiders and possibly get PvP. I have my personal optimal routes to the underground area, but again, I want Zach to play just like he does and get there the way he wants. <laughs> Blue car, blue car. That's a, that's a blue car blue guard. Car. Yep. Oh, f me. They surrounded me. That's all good. That's all good. That's two bodyguards killed. Two bodyguards killed. So still, right. still solid. That's like a survive, dude. How much points is uh? Yeah, two guards can shot. That was actually still a good raid considering boss guards are two points apiece. So that was a quick four point raid. Okay, so that's like a quick survive. Dude, that was a good raid. <laughs> <laughs> good raid. Yeah. Zach ran reserve back with the same plan: underground bunker and hunt raiders. While he was heading down there, we finally checked the leaderboard since the tournament has officially hit the halfway mark of an hour and thirty minutes left on the clock. Can we check score? Scoreboard chat. Let's just do a scoreboard check. We're an hour and a half in. I think it's, it's worth checking it progress. Where are we at right now? So as chat reported, we're at 34th place with 29.5 points. How far are we, chat, from um, from 25th place? What do we need to do for 25th place? And again, chat confirms 25th place has 43 points. So Zach's about 14 points away from the qualifying position. Super doable. We just need a couple of good raids. And this might be one of them. I think those are raiders. Yeah. They spawn in the office, right? They could, yeah. They don't spawn at the power switch, do they? They could do also they? be in the right side. They could be. They could be. Just, just assume that they could be anywhere. They could even be in that little gap there. But um, okay. They, if you heard them in the office, you heard them in the office. Okay. If you heard them in the office, you heard them in the office. Just remember, just be patient with AI. Bandit, brava. They're back there. Is it back? Not in the office. I, I can't tell. You have better. Either up that ramp. He booked it. Priama digging Sidara. All right, here we go. Take your time, all you.
well played, dude. Oh, fuck yeah. The power switch just spawned more raiders. If Zack wipes this second wave, it could jump him straight into contention for 25th place. They don't push right down into here, right? They set up. Um, yeah. It's, it's, I, I won't say they won't. That's a lot of footsteps. Yeah, it's a, it's a fresh uh, raider spawn. Take your time. You're getting covered. Do what you gotta do. One on the other. Прямо дикий пидорас. Ты прямо. I don't want a left hand peek. Yeah, you have the right idea. These are good points, man. Three points each. So I, I, I want to like go in here. You just want to be careful with those blinds, but yeah, you should be good. Oh, well, they dumb me through the blinds. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's in like the water area now, I think. I love how he's playing this. He's staying patient, and instead of forcing an awkward angle for himself, he decides to reposition and reset the fight. Again, something we emphasized during our coaching sessions. Where? In the office, probably. The, the, the raider, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he's in the office. You can do the sprint. Remember the sprint runs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got him. Okay, make sure he's not in that next room, and then you can take that next doorway. I'm not taking any chances. This was beautifully played. Zack wiped two waves of raiders, then made it safely to D2 Extract, garnering a whopping 24 points in a single raid. And this put Zack straight into 25th place. Now, we just need to anchor this position with more of these point-heavy raids. The next raid had no raiders or PMCs on the ground, so we went straight for D2 Extract. But then, Zack gave me an absolute heart attack. For this raid to count as a survive and not a run through, we need to extract at 7 minutes or in under 33 minutes in raid. And he did this. Wait, can you not do that? Just make sure you get you actually get it. Did you get that? Holy sh 329.59. Okay, I'm just making sure because that was so scary. <laughs> I'm min-maxing, bro. That's so scary.
<laughs> oh, I'm gonna lie, dude. Well played. <laughs> I was so scared. 701, bro. Absolute troll. But I'm happy he's having fun. Still sticking with reserve, we spawned right outside King and went straight for the underground bunker again. But this time, it wasn't empty. There. Yep. Too good. You're too good, man. Well played. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> Four points, baby. Well freaking played. Also, he looked he looked pretty geared. That's good loot. Yeah. Good gun to take. Good armor. I hear nothing, so. Zach cleverly grabs the loot and repositions to a safer spot to manage his inventory. But then he hears this. There's two. Get down the hallway. Another great decision here. Instead of committing to a hallway fight with a left hand peek, he decides to reposition to reset the fight. I saw him down the hallway. Yeah. I like this. I like this reset. That's, that's good. That's good. He's going water. How do I flank him? Up there, up there, up the ramp to the left. Up the ramp to the left earlier. He's already out of water. I think he made the jump. Yeah, so I'm not going to backseat him from here, chat. He's, in, he's on a roll. We'll make him make his own decisions, whether he wants to fight this, whether he wants to extract, flank wherever he wants. I don't care. He's doing it. We're not going to backseat him at all here. This was a little bit of a stalemate. His opponent seemed to be running back and forth, but based on the directional audio in classic Tarkov fashion, it was a little confusing to us both as to exactly where he was. So instead of hanging around for too long, Zach decided to make a play on his own. He was still sitting on his boy's body yeah. the whole time. No worries, man. That was still eight points. GG. Um, don't forget the screenshot, the kills. That was good. Good raid, man. Good yeah. raid. Great effort there and still an eight point raid. GG's. The good news, we still have that near meta M4 kit we got from his first PMC kill of the day. So he quickly grabbed it and got back into reserve as we're closing into the last hour of the tournament. As of this moment, Zach is in 26th place, three points behind 25th. As usual, he went straight for the underground bunker and immediately we got contact. Somebody above me too. Oh, f this is water. She reacted to water.
I love this. I love this. He's you can see he's comfortable, chat. Zach's comfortable. It's a it's a little bit of a chess match right now, but he you can see he's comfortable. Like he knows what he's doing. He's trying to so, do pot shots, reposition. How I think he's trying to play the like, the uh he's trying to get some baits in and stuff. It's a good experience for him. I think he's dead. You got him. You got him. Well played, dude. Amazing. Amazing. We have about less than 30 minutes left in the in the tournament, so. Yeah, lead the way, please. Back here, right? Um, no, 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 no. You turn. You turn. Take a right, then left. Take a right into the main hallway. Check the corners, though. And then oh, take yeah. a left here. Up the ramp. Yep, I, yep. I got All it. All you, baby. As I mentioned, we have under 30 minutes left on the tournament clock. So we have time for one last good raid to nail this in the coffin. We didn't bother checking the scoreboard and just knew we had to do our best here. Zach said he wanted to go labs, but I wanted him to stick to reserve because of the success he's been getting. But also, his gut is what got him here. His decision making has been on point today, so I trust him. We spawned by the cafeteria, so Zach cleared out the nearby area. It was pretty quiet with no one in sight until... What the f was that an AI? That's right, no, that was a player. That was playing. That's right though. That's right, man. That was unfortunate. He almost had that guy. Just Tarkov timing, to be honest. We had about under 10 minutes left on the tournament clock, so he quickly requeued into labs to hopefully get some last minute raiders. But the timer was nearing zero, so we decided to just get a quick three point survive. So the real question is, how'd we do? Did Zach make top 25 okay so we are officially at 32nd place good job dude that's that's official congrats yeah. man congrats i can put that in my bio now 32nd <laughs> place let's go competitive pro tarkov player yeah unsigned lft a amateur amateur zach got 32nd he was 12 and a half points away from 25th place that's essentially one good raid away so we failed to hit our goal of making top 25 but the result was still a lot better than you'd expect a 200 hour Tarkov gamer to perform in a competitive tournament. Whatever the result, I'm super proud of Zach. He's already a solid Tarkov gamer to begin with. I didn't have to do much, but he made leaps and bounds within the 72 hours that we met him. I'm also extremely humbled by the fact that Zach trusted us with this. I'm glad we met Zach, and I'm glad we did this. If you guys want to follow him, I'll leave his info in the description of this video. And if you guys want to see why I'm still addicted to Tarkov after all these years, check out this video right here.